Hey everyone, this is Jean Carrasquera with NeoWin and today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 18.922 uh, There have been a few builds in the Windows 10 20H1 development cycle This actually started back in April, May, March, I'm not sure The thing is, because 20H1 is only coming next year we're, we're still very early in the development cycle There's not a lot of features that have been added and so it hasn't been worth doing a video about those features until now. So we're just take, taking a look at all the features that have been added in previous builds, not just the latest one. And let's get started. Uh, but before we do, let me just mention that uh, there are a couple of things here that I can't show you, like the Windows subsystem from Linux or the WSL version 2. So this was actually announced by Microsoft during its build event in May. And what it uh, what it is is it's that it, it can run Linux on in Windows 10, uh, but until now uh, with version two that is you're not going to get a lot better performance and Windows 10 actually ships with a full Linux kernel in it so performance for the WSL now should be way better if you're into Linux that's something you may want to check out. Another thing that I can show you is. A small, very small change in the notifications. Now when you get a notification banner, the, those little things that pop up from the corner here, I can show you that because it is not enabled on my machine. But there's now a little gear icon that lets you turn off notifications or customize the notification settings for that app from the notification banner. You can still do it in any other version of Windows 10 and here. You can just right click it and do this but basically this menu will now be in the notifi notifications banner thanks to that gear icon that's not a big change but it's there now starting with the changes that i can actually show you we have the windows ink workspace now if you use this uh, the work the ink workspace you will know that right now it's actually a pretty big area here that opens up from this from the icon it has shortcuts to snip and sketch uh, it has a section just for your frequent apps or top apps or whatever it is. Um, it is not really just ink focused. So Microsoft has reworked it significantly. It's just a little fly out here with shortcuts to the whiteboard app. And if you don't have the whiteboard app, this will actually install it for you. So that's pretty nice. It'll just go through the Microsoft store, do all of that in the background. It's pretty, pretty, it works pretty well. So that's nice. Or you have the full screen snip, which opens snip and sketch. And I'll just take a full sc a screenshot here and you can just draw on it right away. So if you, if you use ink, it's a little more focused on inking now. It doesn't have one note, but again, this is still a secret feature anyway. So there's a, a good chance that things will be added. And that's, that's the natural progress of things, hopefully that shortcut to one note will be added eventually and then this will also go live to more people because right now it's actually limited to a subset of Windows Insiders. So while we're in Snip and Sketch, I, I want to mention that there's a hidden improvement and improvement might may be debatable, but, uh, but there is a, a change to the snipping experience if you use the, the shortcut here to capture um, anything so if you draw a, a little snip here the animation will just it just drags here to the corner instead of popping up in the notification in the traditional windows 10 notification it just uh, minimizes here to the corner you can actually drag this around but then it will crash after a while but uh, you do that it minimizes there you can still double click it and it will take you to snip and sketch and do everything you usually do with that it just has that really smooth animation going on now instead of the, the typical Windows 10 notifications. And if you use um, if you use it, it looks nicer, but this is still hidden. You have to enable it through some uh, hidden stuff, but it does look pretty nice and hopefully that will make its way to everyone eventually. Uh, speaking of hidden, feature, hidden features in 18922, if you use virtual desktops now, you can, I'm just going to create a new one here. You can actually rename them. So now if you click twice here, you get the option to change the name of a virtual desktop. And it'll just not work right now because it, it's not meant to be accessible. But uh, you can change it, but then it doesn't save. 
So right now it's not really working, but it shows that Microsoft is working on it and hopefully that it will also make its way to insiders soon enough. Moving on from this uh, shell environment of sorts, we do have some changes in the task, task manager. Well, one change, I should say. So if you go to the performance tab here, the disk, the disk section will actually tell you what kind of disk you have. So if you don't know whether you have an HDD or an SSD, Windows 10 will not tell you this right here. It's not a big change, but it could help you know what to expect from your current hard drive. So there's that. There's also some small changes to File Explorer, specifically the search experience. So if you ever search for things in File Explorer, and I, I guess most of us have done that at some point, when you type the search, usually you don't get the full screen, the full page in the File Explorer with search results right away. Now that's no longer the case. It actually gives you the most important results right here on this list. You can just choose whatever you're looking for from here. Or if that doesn't really work for you, you can still go to the phone page. Of course, you just press enter or click there and it takes you to the phone results. But if, if you find what you're looking for more quickly, now you can just click that. It's not as distracting and doesn't take as much focus as it used to. So that's also a nice change. There are a few changes in settings as well. So if you go to, starting with the Windows Update settings, we actually mentioned this a few builds ago. It wasn't enabled for everyone at the time. But now if you go into the delivery optimization settings in Windows Update, and you have to jump through some hoops to get there, but eventually you get to your download settings and you can limit the percentage of bandwidth as you could before. So if you don't want update, the Windows Update, to slow down your internet too much, which is a problem that I have at least pretty often. You can all, you've always been able to limit how much bandwidth Windows Update can use when it's downloading updates, but only in percentage terms. So you use 10%, 50%, whatever you want of your bandwidth, and it'll just adjust to how much bandwidth we ha you have. But now you can just set an absolute value for that bandwidth. So if you want to, to use a maximum of 1 megabit per second, then it will stay 1 megabit per second, no matter what kind of connection you're on. And of course, that means you'll get more benefit if you switch to a faster connection. Windows Update will still only be using that certain amount and affecting your internet speed a little less. So that's that should be useful for some people. I don't actually care too much about that, but... Some people might. Another change in settings is not in Windows Update, so hopefully you can get back to the main page. Okay, there we go. Uh, is in the language settings. So now there's this redesigned uh, language page here, which lets you more visible, visibly see the language options you have for your for your languages. So you can you see it, there's icons for everything. You can choose your Windows Display language, which is still here. And the shortcuts will just change the content of the, just re redirect you to the specific area that you want to get to. Right now it seems somewhat redundant because it's just redirecting you to other tabs that you see here. So if you click the region format here, it'll just take you to the region settings. It is not, uh, it seems like it's an attempt to consolidate everything, but it's not really consolidating everything because you still have those sections there. Maybe Microsoft is working to change that somehow. But yes, you do have these little shortcuts to everything. And of course, to that touch of fluid design that we like so much in these things. So that looks nice. And moving on from settings, we now have the biggest change of these builds and again it's still hidden but not as hidden as, um, as some of the others so if you want to to do this it, you can do it pretty easily but there's now a new cortana app so microsoft actually sort of tweaked the cortana experience with 19h1 a little bit or version 19 well, 1903 or the may 2019 update whatever you want to call it but now there's an actual new cortana app and it looks somewhat different from the one we have right now. For starters, it's, it's windowed. You can just open this wherever you want it to have it. So there's that. And it also supports text input. 
-hmm. Now, Cortana did support this before, but since Microsoft split Cortana on search, now you can only interact with the very common Cortana using your voice. So this is a pretty welcome change for me. You can just type whatever you want here. You see, I already have a lot of conversation here with Cortana. And that's another change in this version of Cortana is that it actually keep track, keeps track of your conversations. It doesn't just give you one result and then forget about whatever it was doing before. So Microsoft showed off a lot of conversational stuff for Cortana at Build. This seems to be, could be part of that work. It just makes it a little easier to keep track of everything you've done with Cortana. So that's pretty nice. It doesn't really support light and dark themes. If you if you care about that, I do like having the dark theme here. Aside from that, there's not a really a lot that's changing. You have the settings page here, which doesn't look too different from what it used to look like. This actually might be even web-based content because it looks very similar to the settings in here. If you go to the notebook, I believe. Yeah, this is, this is probably some sort of web-based content or something like that. Nonetheless, it's a nice change. And this is actually a completely separate app. You can you can run it yourself if you want. You just have to type ms-cortana2 and then a colon. A col uh, it doesn't work unless you add that at the end. So you do have to type it like that. And then we'll just bring up this experience here. You can also enable it in other ways. But it looks like that. Again, this is a beta app. It doesn't work with voice. The microphone is there, but whenever I click it, it doesn't do anything. But it seems like it is meant to work. And this is what it's going to look like. That's pretty nice. Uh, but we'll have to wait for Microsoft to perfect it a little more before it replaces the typical Cortana app, the one we've had so far. And, you know, maybe this will make it a little more likely to be used. We'll have to see if that's the case. Um, with that being said, that's all that's new in the more recent 20H1 builds. Like I said at the start of the video, there's still a long time to go before this update makes its way to everyone, so there's not really a lot that's been added yet, but a lot of stuff should be coming later on. So stay tuned to that. We'll try to keep making these videos when, whenever the, there are big changes. And I'll see you guys in the next one.